Welcome everybody to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. I apologize, my throat's a little raspy still. I just got over probably the worst cold I've ever had in my life. Temp got to 105.3. I even beamed up my armpit and that thing was at 106.7. But I am back today and honestly, I can't stand not making content. A lot of people that do YouTube might look at it as a job. It can be strenuous at times, but I thoroughly love it. Enjoy every minute of making y'all videos. And what I enjoy even more than anything is reading y'all's comments. Salute to y'all, man, for viewing my content for so long, man, means a lot. But let's get into the topic of the day, all right? We're going to be speaking about Hispanics or Latinos in prison. To be more precise, mostly individuals from Mexico. But look, before we move forward, we got to get something straightened out here. Maybe someone in the comments section can help me. But I guess I'm technically Hispanic. My mom is Colombian, right? She was born in the jungles of Colombia. Came over here to the States around 14 or 15 with an already prearranged wedding to a German man. I don't know what it was, some kind of bloodline mixture thing. Who knows? That's what happened until she ended up getting divorced and meeting my dad, the gringo. Anyways, with that being said, I still don't know the answer to this. When speaking on people from, let's say, Colombia, Mexico, Brazil, stuff like that, I mean, what is the proper term? Hispanic? Latino? Chicano? Which one? It says people from places as diverse as Cuba, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Panama, and Argentina may all consider themselves Latino. Brazilians may consider themselves Latino, despite the fact that Portuguese is the main language used, because Brazil is located in Latin America. Now, there's some differences on whether some people from Spain is Latino. According to the AP style book, never heard of it in my life, but it says anyone from a Spanish-speaking land could be a Latino. According to the dictionary, a Latino is someone from Latin America. Not everybody from Spanish-speaking countries identify as Latino or Hispanic. Chicano, for example, is a term mostly adopted by Mexican Americans. Now, the U.S. Census Bureau includes a box on their surveys for Hispanic or Latino. So which one is it? You know, I'm very, it's very complicated to me. But in the article today, they say Hispanic. So that's what I'm running with. Anyways. I'm bringing a story y'all's way from a medium level federal prison in the state of California. And not to mention a personal story that kind of, you know, when it came down to the violence aspect, it all escalated just like this story. Not 100% like it, but uh, they came back for revenge. Let's put it like that. I'll explain when we get there. But first, if you're new to the channel and enjoy all things lock up and crime related, then this is where you want to be. Hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. And check out my playlist with many more videos for you to start watching today. Like I said, we're going to be reading a story first coming from FCC Lompoc. Hopefully I pronounced that right. But it says inmates charged in beating over a prison phone. That's right, the phones in jail and prison can be lethal. But before we get into the details of the story, let me give you a little rundown on this facility. Lompoc is a low-security United States federal prison for male inmates in Lompoc, California. It's located about 175 miles northwest of Los Angeles, adjacent to the Vandenberg Space Force Base. The complex also includes a U.S. penitentiary and a minimum security prison camp. This right here is the medium security facility. Right next to it is a low-level security prison. You also got two other prison facilities, which is considered to be the camps. Lower than low. I know it can get kind of confusing with all these prisons within the same complex, but it's like that in many places across the country. The average offender here is serving between 1 to 15 years for federal drug and or nonviolent offenses, two of which offer dormitory and a room-type housing. The institution offers a full range of inmate employment, vocational training, education, counseling, both mental health and drug abuse, medical, dental, pre-release preparation, and other self-improvement opportunities. And this is a common theme when you're dealing with low security prisons. The lowest level prison I was in was a two, and that's because I was on my way home. So I had to do a re-entry program that was at that prison. And to be completely honest, I didn't see too much violence there, just a few fights. But when it comes down to locks in a sock, shanks, I didn't see nobody get hit up like that. But that was just that level two prison, man. Nobody wanted to trick up their time. They're all pretty much about to go home. But now that we got a little more detail on that prison, let's go ahead and start reading this article. It says federal officials have charged an inmate at Lompoc prison with assaulting a fellow inmate and leaving him with life-threatening injuries following a violent incident last month over the use of a communal phone. Communal, meaning, you know, the state phone. 
even though y'all see a lot of videos coming from certain states with people getting these crates of cell phones, contraband cell phones, the majority of prisons, it's pretty hard to get one. So those state phones, they're still being used like clockwork. But it goes on saying Diego Aguilera Cija was charged with one count of assault with a dangerous weapon with intent to do bodily harm. In connection to the beating and stabbing of Javante Odom. I went on the website, did a little inmate locator, and I found him, but there's no images of him. But according to a criminal complaint filed in the U.S. District Court for the Central District of California, the complaint identified another inmate, Juan Rodriguez, who allegedly attacked Odom. An FBI special agent, Benjamin Platts, an investigator located at the Bureau's Santa Maria field office, said the altercation began over a dispute involving a prison telephone. After reviewing prison video surveillance footage and interviewing Odom, Platt stated in his affidavit that the incident began in the early afternoon when Odom was waiting to use the communal telephone located in Unit K when prison staff took him out of line to attend an evening chow. And I'm sure it wasn't just him that they took out of line. It took everybody, which is strange. Uh, you know, uh, in the state, you don't have to go to chow if you don't want to. I don't know if that's how it works in the feds or not, but I don't know. The way they wrote this up, it sounded like they forced him to go to chow. Anybody who's done time in the feds, let me know. Now, Odom, who was a black man, said that he returned to the phone and confronted a Hispanic inmate who had taken his place in line and hung up the phone after the inmate refused to do so, according to Platts. Odom reached around the inmate, hung up the phone call. Odom walked straight back in his cell as he suspected the other Hispanic inmates would be upset. Less than five minutes later, they came back for revenge over that phone. Odom would be left bloodied and with a stab wound in his neck. After getting back in his cell, Odom said that he heard glass break and noticed that the entire area outside his cell was filled with Hispanic inmates, including Aguilar Cija, before they began exchanging words. Platt said that the video showed Carrillo Rodriguez advance towards Odom's cell while holding a gray beanie in his right hand before the inmates began attacking Odom. Aguilera Cija later admitted to investigators that Carrillo Rodriguez was holding a piece of broken glass inside his beanie, according to the affidavit. Aguilera Cija hit Odom several times in the head with what appeared to be a master lock wrapped in a belt. Mr. Rodriguez was also hitting Odom directly in the neck multiple times with the hand holding the beanie. The white shirt Odom was wearing turned red in color. Prison officials located Odom covered in blood and holding a shirt on his neck to stop the bleeding. When Odom removed the shirt, Platt said prison staff saw blood projecting out of the wound. Damn, so that means they probably hit an artery. Odom was transported to Marion Regional Medical Center's trauma unit where personnel conducted surgery for control of a hematoma and ligation of arterial vessels. So yeah, I guess he did get hit in the artery. In addition, Odom sustained a broken upper front tooth and staples placed across his neck. Homeboy Odom didn't die, right? Very lucky individual right there. If he didn't put pressure on his neck, it probably would have been done done. Like if he got knocked out or something, man, I can't even imagine, you know, getting into the mix with, with the Hispanics, man. And then you got a group of them right from your cell. You know, it's go time. Me personally, I'd say I know I'm about to meet my maker probably. You know, I don't know. It's just me, man. But let me go ahead and break down this personal story that kind of resembles this one. See, in Virginia, when I was doing prison time, there weren't too many Hispanics in there. Probably just a little handful, like five to six in each pod, if that. The most Hispanics I ever seen was in reception. It's a main compound now, but when I was there, it was reception. Even though their numbers were very low, they were trained to go. And, uh, you know, one thing that I realized first and foremost was those guys get revenge. They do. And they'll get you when you don't even expect it. Even in a reception center, they're knocking people clean out with locks and a sock. Like, for instance, all right, I was in a dorm. And his Mexican cat was arguing with an Italian dude. Italian dude wasn't a part of no organization or anything. It was kind of, you know, running lone wolf. I ate a couple meals with him. Uh, that was about it. I didn't really like him. He talked too much, man. I think he might have been from New York or something. But he talked cold cash smack sometimes, man. You know, and he wasn't even built like that. So I'm guessing that's probably what happened with the Mexican cat when they started getting into the little confrontation. But nothing happened, you know, even though it looked really heated. I don't know what they were saying. I wasn't nowhere near. I could see it from across the dorm. But they separated and went different ways. Well, that Mexican dude, he went out the back door, which leads to the yard. And as soon as he stepped out there, the door takes a while to close. Uh, I don't know if it had some kind of spring in the door or something. I don't know. But as soon as he walked out, I could hear, everyone could hear it. He started doing like a whistle. 
So I went out to the yard to see what was going on. And the other Mexican dudes from the other side of the dorm came out the back door and they grouped up. And I don't know what made the Italian guy go out there and do the same thing. I don't know if maybe he was trying to claim dominance like I ain't scared of y'all. Now those guys are grouped up and an Italian dude, man, believe it or not, he walks right past him. And then two of the guys from the group kind of leave and follow behind the Italian dude on the track, but giving him a little bit of distance. So I'm watching as I'm walking. I'm like, man, all right, they ain't going to do nothing. It was like three laps and they ain't do nothing. Then all of a sudden, this dude had a coat. This was notorious. I've seen it done probably three times in this prison. One dude had a coat on. The other guy had a coat on too, but I didn't notice until it happened that it was just over his shoulders. His arms weren't even in the sleeves. But man, he popped that jacket off and cracked that Italian dude in the back of his head right there on the track. And they just kept on walking like it was nothing, man. You know, they didn't look at them. They didn't do nothing. They just kept on walking. And also, what's weird about this story is I don't even remember what happened to them. After they did that, I think I might have went inside or something. I don't know. But what I'm trying to say here from every situation I've seen with Hispanics, Mexicans, and lockup, they will come back for vengeance. And not just one, a handful of them. After I left that prison and went to my other main compounds, I didn't see too many Hispanics at all. The only Hispanics or Latinos, I guess you could say, I seen after that were Latin Kings. But recently, because I keep in contact with some inmates that are still doing time in the Virginia prison. Remember, I tell you all the time that the white guys in the Virginia prison system had no power like that. You know what I mean? There were some tough guys in there handling business, but for the most part, it was Bloods, Crips, GDs, Latin Kings, mostly Bloods. They run every damn place I've ever went to. But now I'm hearing that white dudes is grouping up. They're standing on that Aryan business. Not to mention the amount of Mexicans in the Virginia prison system has grown dramatically, he said. But you got to understand as well, you know, prisons like California, Texas, stuff like that. They're right there on the border of Mexico. So naturally, of course, their prisons are going to have more Hispanics in it. But it's only a matter of time before, you know, it spreads out to the whole country. Now, this is a major thing that you got to understand when it comes to Hispanics. Mexico, Colombia, any of those kind of countries right there. Look, the price of life is cheap. So they'll kill someone real quick. That's what they're used to seeing. Disrespect to certain someone from those countries. You and your whole family might be on the next news edition. Hanging from the interstate freeway. Right? Not even playing, man. The price of life is extremely cheap. So if you ever go to prison and get into the mix with some Hispanic cats, man, you better think twice. Chances are they're going to come at you pretty deep and definitely with some weapons. But that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. And just to jump into the story one more time, I forgot to mention, man, you know, in California, they have race wars all the time, man. You just respect one person, they're all going to end up fighting. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's some kickback from this between the blacks and the Hispanics. But who knows? You just got to think like that, especially in a state like California. But stay tuned. I got plenty more content coming your way. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, y'all be easy, be safe, and stay free.